Hello, my name is Kirsi Ylänne. I work as an accessibility specialist at Celia Library for the Print Disabled in Finland. I'm a former chair of IFLA section library serving persons with print disabilities. My four-year term as a chair ended in August, and now I'm a member of the standing committee of the section with Jelena Lesaja from Croatia. I'm very honored to talk to you in this Zoom conference about library services for people with reading difficulties in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. I will tell you about the situation in Finland. The title of my presentation is The Importance of Having Digital Services. So it, must, it is not hard to guess how in Finland library services for people with print disabilities were insured during the lockdown in the pandemic. I interviewed Celia's library service manager, Kati Matson, about how we have managed during the past year and a half at Celia. Kati said that despite the fact that all the personnel have been working from home, the situation has not shown to our users. The main reason for this is that Celia is nearly entirely a digital library. Let me describe how library services for the print disabled are organized here in Finland, so that it is easier to understand the situation. Celia Library is funded by the Finnish government, and it operates under the Ministry of Education and Culture. Our task is to provide access to literature to visually impaired persons and all who cannot read printed books. The official name of the library is Library for the Visually Impaired, but since 2001 we have used the name Celia Library, or a shorter version, Celia. The name Celia comes from the founder of the library, Miss Cecilia Celi Mekelin, who in 1890 started to produce braille books with her friends. The name was not changed just to honor the founder. It was changed to welcome persons who don't have a visual impairment but have other difficulties in reading. For example, persons who have dyslexia, learning difficulties, other cognitive issues, or who cannot physically handle printed books. The operations of Celia Library are based on the Finnish copyright law, which has given Celia a right to produce accessible versions of books and deliver accessible book formats to persons who have the print disability. The Marrakesh Treaty and the EU Directive implementing the treaty in 2018 did not have any significant changes to Celia's status in the library field in Finland. Celia is the biggest producer of accessible books in Finland, and we produce both learning materials for all educational material, as well as fiction and non-fiction in accessible book formats. Until the end of 1990s, we, as the most of the similar libraries for the visually impaired, concentrated on producing and lending braille books and audiobooks on tapes. During the 1990s, it was realized that digitalization would give opportunities to serve better, more people. International development of a digital talking book format was led by the DAISY Consortium, which was founded by six organizations serving visually impaired readers in Europe and Japan. The new DAISY format was a digital format and it made possible to deliver audiobooks on CDs instead of using more expensive C cassettes, and thus it became much cheaper to make copies of audiobooks. What is really brilliant in the DAISY format is its usability. DAISY is an acronym from the words Digital Accessible Information System. It offers a flexible and navigable reading experience, allowing a reader to navigate in, a, in the book, move between headings, or search a certain page number. Features which are important and significant, especially for students. The format also makes it possible to synchronize text and audio, which is very helpful for persons with dyslexia. In the beginning of this century, we at Celia developed a digital library around the DAISY format. We digitized our talking book collections, meaning that about 15,000 analog audiobooks were converted to digital DAISY books. 
we opened an online library service for users to manage their own loans. At first, Daisy Books were delivered on CDs via post to customers. Each borrower received their own copy of, the, of a Daisy title. CDs were not returned to the library. This helped us serve more people with print disabilities when availability of copies were not a problem anymore. We developed a book club service for those who could not or did not want to choose themselves what to borrow. The peak year was 2013, when over 900,000 loans on CD, CDs were sent to users. While well, delivering such amounts of CDs annually is not cheap, and the cost started to become a burden. At the same time, internet connections had become faster and faster, mobile devices more popular, and online services become more important. Celia Library started online delivery service, where users can either stream Daisy books with a computer or mobile device, or download the book. During the past five, six years, the focus has been on the deliver on online services. CD de delivery is aimed for those clients who cannot use online services, like for example elderly people or persons living in the nursing homes. It is estimated that about 5% of the population in Finland have difficulties to read and could benefit from accessible book formats, especially from talking books. In Finland, that 5% is about 250,000 people. However, in 2013, Celia Library had only about 30,000 users. We knew that we could not reach out to the potential users alone. The solution was to collaborate with public libraries. In 2013, a two-year project called Library for All started with 34 pilot libraries around Finland. Together with public libraries and with help from disability organizations, Finnish Federation of the Visually Impaired and Diverse Learners Association, we developed a new service model to help people around Finland to find CELA services and to help public libraries offer accessible titles the new, user, new users. In the Swedish service model, a person with a print disability can go to the nearest local library, public library, and after discussing with a librarian, become a registered user of Celia's online library services. In local public libraries, users can also get face-to-face -face advice on how to start using Celia's online services. We don't demand any written proof of a print disability, but we trust that people understand that the services are based on an exception in the Finnish copyright law and are not open for persons who don't have a print disability. Nowadays, the amount of users of Celia's services is over 50,000, and the majority are using online services. A similar service model is also used in academic libraries, and in schools, where special teachers can register pupils with reading difficulties as Celia's users. During the Project Library for All, we noticed that the awareness of accessibility was not very good among librarians in public libraries. Two ways to tackle this problem were found. One, include accessibility issues in the education of future librarians. We have contacts to universities and vocational schools, and we give regularly training for students about accessibility and accessible library services. Number two, com compose guidelines on accessibility for librarians. Accessibility guidelines for public libraries was published in Finnish and in Swedish in uh, 2017, and an English version is also available under a Creative Commons license for anyone to use freely. The address is https uh, colon slash slash www.celia.fi slash eng slash accessible dash library. 
Let's now have a look at the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The situation in Finland before the COVID-19 pandemic was that Celia Library was giving services mainly online. The total amount of loans were over 1 million and 67% of all loans were made online in 2019. The amount of CD loans were 360,000. Braille book loans are small compared to daisy books, but of course important for braille readers. Each braille reader gets their own copy of a borrowed book. The only materials that are returned to Celia are children's tactile books. We can say that there were no effect on Celia's online services. But when the COVID-19 pandemic started and lockdowns closed the doors of public libraries, the biggest impact for Celia was that the amount of new users dropped. The solution was to allow registration by telephone. A librarian interviewed the potential user and a right to use the services was explained during the conversation. Compared to 2019, the amount of new users registered at libraries dropped over 3,000 in 2020. Because there has been disruptions in the services of public and academic libraries, print disabled persons who also use the services of those libraries have suffered. This means, for example, no access to materials like music during the lockdown period, or restricting access only to reserved materials or only a small proportion of collections. Public gatherings have been heavily restricted, which means which has, which has meant that many events in libraries have been cancelled. So while access to Celia's collection has remained at the normal level, persons with print disabilities have had some difficulties using library services in general. In Finland, the digital materials of public libraries became very popular in 2020. Unfortunately, the majority of e-materials in public libraries are not at the moment accessible for users of assistive technology. Some persons with low vision can use e-materials of public libraries, but that is not possible for blind users who use assistive technology. The majority of Celia's personnel started to work from home at the end of March 2020, and we are now in November 2021, slowly returning to the office. The good internet connections ensured that working from home was not a problem. The telephone service and IT support for our online systems continued also in remote working conditions. Only persons who are responsible of lending physical materials, daisy CDs and tactile books, have continued to work at the office and handle the lending to the customers. The strength of Celia is that we had built the digital library and online services well before the pandemic started. The weakness is that the way to become a new user of Celia's online services heavily relies on having access to a local library. When the libraries were closed and the need for digital materials was the highest, becoming a new user was hard. It is likely that some people wanted to become users did not find out that public libraries helped in registering by telephone. Some other effects. We also saw a big increase in numbers of users of commercial digital pub book services. In Finland, subscription services where a customer can get access to a collection of audio and ebooks by paying a monthly fee are very popular. These services, like Storytel, have made publishers produce more audiobooks and in 2020, over 1,700 commercial audiobooks were published in Finland. Publishers are also interested in producing so-called backlists as audiobooks, not just the newest titles. Hopefully, public libraries will be able to get these audiobooks into their collections. This would be very good for those print-disabled persons who can use their eyesight. 
When we compare the situation of Celia with other libraries serving persons with print disabilities, we find that the situation is quite the same. Many libraries have similar dis digital services lend in audio, daisy audiobooks. Some of the libraries have had a significant increase in downloads in 2020, but at Celia, the rise of loans 14% was in line with the increase of users 16%. So there was no clear increase in the amount of loans. But the proportion of online service users grew and was 83% of users in 2020. The greatest difference between Celia and our sister organizations in Norway, Belgium and the Netherlands was that while other libraries had a decrease in the production of daisy books because of lockdowns. We, didn't, we did not have any decrease. Celia has outsourced all narrating and daisy book productions. We have a co-production model with many Finnish publishers, and when the publishers increased the audiobook production during 2020, it was easy to keep up Celia's production at the plant level, 1,300 accessible books. So, is a digital library and relying heavily on online services the best solution for the print disabled persons? To give you an honest picture, we have to discuss the weaknesses of the digital library. When Celia's digital library is being developed, we decided to abandon something to have enough resources for the new ways of giving service. Earlier, Celia had service hours and open doors for clients to visit the library. This face-to-face -face service was stopped, and personal service is given only by telephone, chat service, and email. This may sound harsh, but on the other hand, Celia is situated in Helsinki in southern Finland, and visiting the library was accessible only for those who live in Helsinki area. Developing a user interface for, the, for all print disabled has been challenging. We started with a very simple online user interface, which was aimed based on the text, and the aim was to make sure that it worked well with screen readers for visually impaired users. The growing proportion of dyslexic users demanded that more attention was given to visual layout of the interface. To help finding titles, cover images of titles were added, and also icons for different categories of books. Now we are working on adding fuzzy search so that searching is easier even if the user makes spelling mistakes. Improving the usability is a constant work. However, we have found out that the greatest challenge is the user support. Getting new users is not a problem, but getting new users to become active users is challenging. Support and help in the beginning is very important. Also, librarians working at public libraries need help and training so that they know how to advise new users. This is something we are trying to improve all the time. One positive learning from the pandemic has been the ways we have begun using online systems like Teams and Zoom for remote con connections in the whole society. It has meant that persons who have difficulties in physical access to places because of poor mobility, long distances or little money to use for transport have been able to attend online events. I give one example of an accessibility seminar Celia has organized since 2018 for the public sector organizations. Earlier the number of participants was around 100 persons who attended the seminar physically. Remote followers, followers were about 250 to 300 persons. In 2020 and 2021, when the seminar was organized online, the amount of participants was over 1,200 1, people in both years. I am optimistic that in the future, mainstream digital services will become more accessible and easier to use. We have already seen what kind of effect the Web Accessibility Directive has had in the library field. 
Finnish academic and public libraries have improved the accessibility of their websites and online library systems. Following Web Content Accessibility Guidelines When the European Accessibility Act comes into force in June 2025, persons with print disabilities will have better access to digital books when libraries can acquire accessible books in their collections. While the digital services have been important during the pandemic, and even vital in lockdown periods, I want to say in the end that there is also need for other physical library services. I don't think everything should be digital. Ensuring access to printed braille books for visually impaired readers is important. Meeting people in libraries and getting help and advice from librarians face-to-face -face is needed. A digital library like Celia cannot operate alone, but the col collaboration with other libraries is crucial so that Finnish people with reading difficulties have e equitable access to library services and literature. Thank you for your attention. Kiitos.